Hey there, we just wanted to take today and just make a video for those of you who are struggling with some type of addiction. We both have come out of addiction and what we thought we'd do is make a video of the top five things that would help you, truly help you break addiction. Stay tuned. Step number one is change your channel. And it is so crucially important exactly yes. what that says. If you think about your mind, and so many times what happens is we get stuck up here too much. And that's what causes the addiction, the lack of peace, all of that because we're just stuck up here. So it's so important that when you get stuck on a thought that you need to change your channel. And it doesn't even matter what you change it to, the color blue it doesn't matter but it's so important to change your channel just like you're changing a channel on your remote control I, I, today she was talking to someone and they, she was talking about how strong your mind is but how much authority over your mind and over your thoughts you actually have that you have the ability to make yourself think differently and to literally change your channel and he, he he actually came back with thing I lost the remote <laughs> well then go back old school and get up and change it yourself so I think that what she really helped me in is that that changing your channel really is also um, understanding how our brains are so powerful and how it can lock us in a thought process or and uh, bring us into almost like a dark depression kind of thing Right, because this thought begets that thought, begets that thought, and before you know it, you're way over here, and you don't even know how you got there. You're like, wow, how did my thoughts take me way over here? When you have to, you know, take control of every thought that comes in your mind. You know, when you get that thought of, you know, it trying to creep up on you where you need to go and... Self-medicate. Yeah, really? whatever you're yeah. addicted to is to help get you out of here and that's where the addiction starts is to get out of here and to get into some sort of addiction then it starts with changing your channel and so yeah. when you get out of here it's easier to overcome your you addiction. told me one time this idea that 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 a lot of times the addiction the, the chasing after something was really a way for you to uh hide or escape you didn't really want to face that or deal with that or um you know and, and so actually in some ways the the self-medicating was a way to help you get out of right here. absolutely that's usually what starts the addiction i mean there's multiple reasons as why people start addiction whether it's you know starts with just pain pillars pain pillars pain, pain <laughs> pills and you then become addicted that way or but a lot of times people self-medicate because they don't want their they're tired of feeling the way they're feeling. And so the only way mm -hmm. they can feel like they can get away from that is by self-medicating or whatever, whatever they become addicted to, whether right. it's food or any sort of drinks or drugs or, or anything, really, it's usually because you're not happy from within, which starts good. with the mind, the process of the mind. So to get your mind healthy starts with changing your channel so if you if you think about it the same powerful mind that we have that leads us into addiction really right can, also can lead us help out. lead us out is right. that you just make a decision so okay here you are you've made a decision to watch this video you've made a decision to decide how to change your channel how to break addiction so you're on this other side so now we take that same powerful mind and we say okay now when you start feeling that when you start feeling yourself lean to that or or walk down that same thing then then that's when you start putting your mind on other things you know other you know maybe get outside like you said go for a walk or go for uh you know go get around some fun happy people go you know at, you know whatever things it's changing your channel and i think that also leads us into kind of like the b side or the b point of changing your channel i i found it so interesting that the way you helped me to understand it is change your routine as well 
so let's say you're you know you wake up in the day and and you're used to doing this first and then this second and then this third and and when you do this you know let's say you get in the morning you check your Facebook and you do that in the den and that's where you you that's where you smoke every day well you know changing your channel can also mean Change changing your routine, routine. don't right. yeah go ahead because you don't want to hit those trigger points trigger points that's well said trigger points you know what your trigger points are you know that every day you smoke your cigarette or you you know by when you do this and when you after you eat mexican food you got to have a cigarette or right. or whatever even into drinking you know that when you're socially out with people that's gonna be a trigger point so <clears throat> think about just ways all the different ways that and it doesn't have to be that I never go in the den again, or it never has to be. Right, but usually it's the steps that you take every morning. Usually every person has some sort of a ritual, what they do every morning. It's their routine. And so you need to change up that routine yeah. so that you don't hit a trigger point. Oh yeah, well, like you said, after I do this, then I need to do that. Right. No, we need to change that up completely. So take your shower first before you go in the den. Right. Or watch... You know Tom and Jerry before you go on the <laughs> I don't know. Step number two is uh, also comes from Gail. Um, it's uh, it, it's called it's not even an option. Make it make it in your mind. I guess it kind of still is changing your mind, but you have to make that line in the sand to say this is not even an option. And one time Gail said this to me, and this reason it's always stuck with me. She said, Johnny, we're not going back. It's not even an option. And she said, it's the same option as if we could go buy an airplane today. It ain't going to happen, right? <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a, a decision that you, you make this line, like I said, line in the sand. And no matter, <clears throat> no matter what, I'm not going back. I may fail. And I may fall. And here's the thing. You will. I think that's the first thing that the, re, the truth is nobody ever wants to talk about this. You you probably will fail. You probably will fall. It's, but you have to get back you up. You get and back keep up. Walking. Right. And if you make that decision that I, it's not even an option, it's it's not saying it's not an option to fail. It's not an option to fall. It's not an option to go back. A failure doesn't mean that uh, I'm giving up. A fall doesn't mean that I'm quitting. A failure or fall means, okay, we, we We're just... We're human and we all make mistakes and right. we all fall short. And so we just have to keep moving forward. Moving forward. Because so many times people, that's what happens with people that are trying to become sober in whatever aspect that is, or step away from their addiction of any kind, is that they feel like every once they fall, then it's over. That's over. Then why yeah. bother? See, I knew this wouldn't work. Yeah. I did that, that, you know, obviously this isn't for me. Um... Number three, step number three is uh, stay accountable. For me, staying accountable uh, is getting yourself around a network of people that will root for you and be, be um, you can be honest, transparent, sincere with. Um, I don't necessarily mean that to be accountable is to have somebody there that's going to beat you over the top of your head and yeah uh, <laughs> you can boy you you know you're just the same old guy i knew you but would, somebody you know. to talk to somebody to encourage you somebody to walk this walk with you because just going back to what we just said we all fall short and so sometimes we do have days bad days where yeah. you know didn't work out so well for us but you know we then we can get a partner, accountability partner that says, you know what, I know that it, you had a bad day, but let me help you keep walking. Let's not get stuck there. Yeah, right. Let's just keep walking keep this forward. out. You're not going back. Because we need to be healthy. That's right. And I think that the idea of even having somebody say, okay, so what were you thinking? What, where were right. you at that moment? What, what took what, you there? Yeah, yeah. You know, were you by yourself? Was it late at night? Um, you know, was were you depressed? Were you, did something bad happen to you during the day? Let's talk this thing out. You know, but I think the thing is, I think the hardest thing about that is to find somebody you can really, truly be transparent with. Um, I learned to be transparent with her, but before I could really be transparent with her, I had to really trust her because in my mind I was thinking, okay, so if I tell her, 
that I fell or that I was thinking these thoughts or having this, she's going to, you know, like, what? You know, I, you know, I, I thought we were past this. I thought, you know, blah, blah. And, and what I realized is that if I would come to her beforehand and say, man, I'm really struggling. I'm having these thoughts. I'm walking down this path. And you know when you are. You know when you're kind of leaning back into that thing. To be able to have somebody that I can trust and uh and and i hope hopefully it could be your spouse but it might need to be somebody else that you can really say man i i can feel this thing back on me i can feel it crawl it crawled back on me i need i need you to help me so i think what we want to add to this also is that there are people out there such as myself that overcame addiction by doing it by myself because I didn't want somebody every 30 seconds say, hey, how you doing? 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 That would drive you crazy. And if it's that if it's that five minutes that you weren't thinking about it now and they come and ask you, now you're thinking about it. So not using that as a cop out, you just have to know your your skills and know if you're if you have that much power to overcome it by yourself. And I wouldn't say I completely I didn't seclude myself and wasn't around other people. No, I made sure that I was around other people all the time. Right. But didn't really ever tell them this is what I'm doing because I didn't want or them not to doing. or right. I, I didn't yeah. want them to know, you know, and be asking and you know, I had a, a friend of mine that was trying to quit smoking and at first she told me about it, but then she didn't bring it up again. And I asked her a couple of times after a few months, you know, how's it going? And she was having some struggles, but then I never really wanted to ask her again because I didn't want to bring shame to her. However, if, the, if you're addicted to heroin and you know the next time that you stick that needle in your arm could be the last, could be the last yeah. breath that you take, yeah. then yes, we need to overcome this today. Today is the new day. So yes, then we need to be have accountability partners, but your accountability partner might not be that your neighbor. It might be somebody that's in yeah. NA or that might be at your church or celebrate recovery groups. Right. Or something, or like, something that. Yeah. like that. Yeah. That isn't necessarily somebody that's constantly your face, but yet is your accountability partner. So when you feel weak, then you can talk to them. And then but I they're think, not going to bring shame. Yeah, and I think that's the two words that hit me right there is that, um, you know, you your accountability partner might not be in your inner circle. Right. You know, because, and most of the time it actually isn't just because, yeah. especially when you're, you know, drugging it, then, right. you know. But the other thing that I think is the final word to this is that shame is a powerful, powerful enemy. It's a powerful tool. Um, you can get to where you start focusing on so much on yourself and how messed up you are and how bad you are that shame comes in so strongly that that it actually becomes a trigger to get up in your mind and actually you start wanting to self-medicate again so it's almost like cyclical you know you, we need to break this cyclical damaging lifestyle what what helps with getting into possibly outside of your inner circle and become part of, you know, like a celebrate recovery program or, or, you know, being accountable to somebody else is that it helps you to take your focus off of shit. You'd be shocked how many people do with addiction and, and you're not the only one. And, uh, and shame is, shame is, is a lie. That's a good way to say it. I think number four is starting to get into the the re, the really healing part of your mind and your heart, and that is um, we say I say it like this: uh, focus on the promise, not the problem. And for me, when I was talking about that cyclical damaging lifestyle, is that I, I kind of look at it like uh, a. You know, a bull rider, when a bull rider is getting off a bull, the, you know, the, the, the thing that he tries to do is lift his eyes up and find a position away from the, the track of the bull. Because 
wherever he puts his eyes, his focus, that's where he's going to end up. And as he's sitting there, if he just falls in the well to say, in the dirt, then the bull's going to come back around. You may feel like you got broke free. You may feel like you broke that addiction. You may feel like you, you're having a victory dance, but it come pretty soon that bull's coming back around and there you are just sun fishing in the dirt. Vulnerable now in a position that is actually somewhat worse than when you were riding it. For us personally, the only way that we could break the cycle is with the help of God. To lay this out there as clear as I can make it is that I had to take my, my, my vision and my perspective off of me. And I had to find something bigger than me. I had to find something bigger than, than pornography and bigger than alcohol and bigger than all of my addictions. And the only thing bigger than that was God the Father. I would say to you that it wraps it all up to all five steps. He's the promise. He's not the problem. I decided to put my focus on his promises, not my problems. His, his faithfulness, not my failures. You know, how many years? How many years in the middle of my addiction did I say, I, I got to stop doing this. I can't do this. I'm, I got And then I'd fall right back to it and fall right back to it and fall back and fall back and fall back. And I never could break that cycle. Well, it was only when I stopped focusing on my abilities and started to focus on his abilities, then he because, broke the cycle of shame. Right, because yeah. then you, you just have to put your mi mind to it. You yeah. know, like we go back to changing your channel, your mind is a powerful thing. Yeah. And so, so many times people fail and sometimes people use it as an excuse yeah. as well, you know, I'll just do better tomorrow. But that you really can't do that because then every day is an excuse. Wow. So, you know, so focusing on the promise is and saying, I, yes, you know, I can and I will overcome this. That's good. And I think that leads us to our last point. The last one is breaking the cycle, breaking the vicious cycle of the whole thing, of it all, is that once you decide that this is the road that you're walking down, that you are overcoming addiction, that you have to keep walking forward, you have to keep walking, I guess is my yeah, point, and instead of keep going in a vicious circle where you're going to stop, and then the next day, oh, well, I'm weak, and then the next day you're back at it, and then it's months, and then you're like, okay, well, I need to stop, stop again. No, you need to stop, put your mark in the sand, mm -hmm. and get a focal point, and reach that focal point. So I think that's the, you know, you could say the, the final step, you know, the, the, we know, we're very aware there's lots of steps, right. and we'll, we'll yes. you know, and we are interested to hear some of your steps and, and some of the things that helped you, you, and so leave comments below, but I would say that, that breaking, breaking the chain, the, you know, the cycle, you could put an equal sign and say the issue is worse. You know, where is your mind, what is your mind focusing on, and if you can't, and if you find it hard that you're, to change your channel, or you find it hard, what your focus at is on or any of that just put worship in and it will change the help you change your channel it will change the atmosphere, atmosphere. it will change so much so really focusing on worship is just so i think that's where most addictions come from is the lack of peace yes is whatever usually like going back to changing your channel is you're you're not at peace and so you're trying to overcome not being at peace and so you become addicted to whatever and so because you're trying to get rid of that feeling that uneasy feeling that you have and so that's where worship comes in mm -hmm. is being in God's perfect peace there's yeah. nothing like it nothing in the world that's like it, being in his peace and so putting on worship helps you get and really the issue of breaking that final cycle is that you become you you literally put your your heart back in his hands you put your mind back in his hands and you put your life back in his hands and what he begins to do is he communes with us and just just really 
builds that relationship back. So are you get so grateful that for what he is in your life and what he's done for you that you literally stop focusing on what's wrong with you and the next thing you know you wake up and for me this is this is the case for me I woke up didn't even realize that stuff had been broken off of my life the chains have been here's something that I felt like God told me a long time ago tell me who I am and I'll show you who you are if you, if you sit around focused and telling you who you are, you're trash, you're dirt, you're the, you're right. That's all you're ever going to be. But when you start telling him, you're Abba Father, you're the Alpha and Omega, you are Lord, you are Savior, you're my God, you're my passion, you're my hope, you're my joy, you're my peace. Then he starts saying, you're my son. You're the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. I just encourage you today that these five steps are just the beginning. We want to walk this out with you. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you're going through. We want you to know that we are a safe place. We've been there. We've walked it. And we want you to join with us in this journey. If you have broken addiction, let us know your story. If you are um, going through breaking addiction, if there's some process that you want more information about, let us know your story. And let us walk that with you. Let's pray for you. We are celebrating our sobriety and we want to celebrate sobriety with you as well. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate that you take the time and I hope that you write these notes and know that there's probably a whole lot more that we didn't cover here today that we would be more than happy if you have any questions. Right, we're just trying to put it into one quick synopsis, but there's obviously much more. A lot more. So follow us on this journey and help us celebrate sobriety. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Yeah.